All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. Today we're gonna to talk about English wheels, particularly my English wheel. What makes a good English wheel? What makes a bad English wheel? I kinda of just wanna demystify metal shaping on this channel. I grew up wanting to learn so much about metal shaping. YouTube wasn't really a thing. There wasn't, you know, any metal craft guys that I could learn from at a young age. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. So this is a pretty basic English wheel. I built this English wheel when I needed to make my first sail panel for a 54 Chevy that I chopped. So it was a, a tool built by necessity. So I didn't try and make the most beautiful English wheel I could, but uh, it definitely works awesome for me and I've used it for years. So this is a 36 inch throat depth English wheel. So you could technically do it, you know, a six foot long panel if you had to switch it from side to side. I built it with four inch by six inch quarter inch wall steel tubing, HSS, hollow structural steel. The legs on it are just two by four by quarter. The dies on it or the anvils, the wheels themselves, and this adjuster came from a Harbor Freight cheapy English wheel. All the anvils came from a cheap English wheel. Now, when we're talking about anvils or the wheels themselves, what makes a good one, what makes a bad one is the quality of the actual wheel, the hardness of it, and the surface finish. So these ones being a cheap English wheel, they're okay. I use them and they're, and they're fine. They're not beautifully polished. They weren't finished extremely, you know, chrome looking polish. That is something that you'll see a lot of really high quality wheels. They'll have super shiny dies and that's for surface transfer and consistency. Obviously, if it's made on a, on a lathe, it's gonna be round. So that's where the consistency comes in. But the surface finish when you're using a wheel actually transfers. And what I mean by that is that if you have a panel, just a regular steel sheet or a regular aluminum sheet, and you run it through a wheel that has polished dies or polished anvils, it will polish your sheet metal. So when you see that really impressive stuff like Marcel's metal shaping or, you know, Racheline, Ron Covell, those guys, when they're making panels and it's coming out looking like chrome, they're using aluminum sheet usually, and they've got really high polished dies that surface transfer that finish. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the dies. I use these ones, they're fine. Every car I've ever wheeled anything on, I've just done on this one and it's, and it's been fine. Even Ray Shaleen, he talks about how you can just use a Harbor Freight bead roller and he actually makes kits so that you can just beef them up because really the problem with a cheap bead roller, or sorry, bead, bead roller, English wheel, this is the English wheel. The problem with English wheels usually is not the wheels themselves because they're just lathed wheels. It's not uh, something that you can really screw up. You can't make them oblong or, or anything like that. The problem with cheap English wheels is usually the frame. And that's why I built a new frame for mine. We talk about something called deflection. And that is when you tighten the wheels together and you start to add pressure and it flexes your frame, that's a deflection. If you have a really thin walled frame, not a very large frame, you're gonna have more deflection and that's where your inconsistencies will come in. Your surface tension, your pressure that you're, you, that you're applying to your panel to stretch it, that's where you're not gonna get consistencies because you're actually stretching out your frame. So the more you tighten it, you're not really pressing, you're just bending your frame. So having a beefy structural frame is kind of the most important thing. The dies are secondary because you know, if you really want a polished transfer onto your metal, you gotta be doing some pretty high profile work for that to be a real issue. I mean, even these ones, they make my panel shiny and they're not ripply because of the wheels or anything. They, they turn out quite nice. So that's kind of all I have to really tell you about, you know, the wheel itself. I know a lot of guys that have built their own English wheels using these dies and uh, they've used them for their whole careers. And that's, and they do amazing work. Don't be scared about buying an English wheel that's cheap, just think about ways that you can beef it up a little bit. I'd suggest checking out Ray Shaleen because he beefs up cheap Harbor Freight English wheels all the time. And if you have a cool steering wheel, stick it on there. So what we're gonna do first is, um, I've got a few test panels. I'm gonna run a few panels through here. I'm gonna show you how the English wheel can planish. I'm gonna show you how the English wheel can stretch and I'm gonna show you how the English wheel can form. Now, planishing, what I mean by that is that we're using a little bit lighter tension. I'm gonna beat up a panel with a hammer uh, on a sandbag and make a mess, and then I'm gonna show you how it will smooth it out in the English wheel. And then I'm gonna take just a flat panel, I'm gonna stretch it in the English wheel, and you'll be able to see how it's adding shape to the panel. 
And then I'm gonna use this rubber. My friend Johnny, he sent me this. This is uh, something that Trick Tools sells. It's just a rubber band, basically. This rubber band allows your panel to go through and your panel will, you know, press into the rubber because the rubber is soft, obviously, and then it'll conform to the lower die. So if I took a panel, I could roll it through there and it would just add form. Difference between form and shape is that form is just two dimensional. Shape is adding stretch or shrink from my understanding. So let's get into that right now. Okay, this is just 18 gauge sheet metal. I'm just gonna show you a little bit. I'm not actually trying to make anything. This is, I'm not gonna take a ton of time here. I just wanna show you the basics of, of all this. When you're gonna wheel something for shape, the important thing about your panel is that you leave the outside frame of the panel untouched. You don't wanna run the wheel over that. Think about it like this. If we were to stretch evenly the entire surface of this, it would just get bigger. It wouldn't, it wouldn't come up at all. We wouldn't add any shape because you just stretched the whole thing. So if you leave the edge of it all the way around, that will keep this size the same. And then we're stretching the center. The center has to go somewhere. It's gonna go up. And that's the basics of it. Another way to think of it and something that somebody used a metaphor to help me learn was think about you're blowing a bubble like a bubble blower, you dip it in the soapy water, you've got the frame around it, and the surface area of that frame or of that soap is a certain size. If you are to blow on it, the surface comes up like this and the surface will actually gain surface area because you're bringing it up, but you have to keep the frame the same all the way around to allow the center to come up. So that's the easiest way I can explain it. So I'm just gonna draw a quick frame around this with uh, with my Sharpie. This is just gonna be a guide for me not to wanna run that over when we're putting it through the wheel. And what I'm looking for with this, and if you're trying this for the first time, is you just want to get used to tracking your panel. You wanna get used to pushing it in and pulling it out and slowly moving across the panel. It seems simple, that's a tough thing to get used to. So muscle memory will come into play the more you do that. You'll be able to work the panel one way and work it the other way, just based on your arm movements. So we'll get this panel in here and tighten it up. There's so much shape already in there that I can't even pop it the other way. It's so strong. So that's just it stretching one time. The amount of tension that you add greatly affects that. So it's really important, especially if you're gonna do something very low crown, like a, a door skin or, or something like that. You just want to make sure that you're consistent with your tracking. You know, this is, this is your tracking. You wanna be as consistent as you can and you wanna take it step by step, nice and slow. Light surface tension, you wanna use the correct die profile. I've talked about this before with the uh, planishing hammer and it same exact goes for the English wheel. If you have a really low crown panel, you want to use a really low crown die. This is quite a high crown and that's why we've got so much out of it so quickly. But um, a flatter radius die, so a higher number like a 36, inch radius. Think about radius like if you had a wheel that was a 36 inch radius, that would be a six foot wheel. And you're taking just a little section of that die. That's how shallow that crown would be. 
on a 36 inch radius. So your die choice greatly affects your outcome, obviously. You wanna have a really low crown, lower anvil, and flat upper wheel to get a very low crown panel. The other thing that you can do, when you track like this, you'll actually feel, when you touch it, a little bit of the lines. So to get rid of those, you can use light pressure once again, and then run it through the other way. We'll just do that for you right now. smooth it out a ton just from that. That's the very basics, the absolute basics of stretching with a wheel. I'm gonna show you because you can't see with me just holding it, but let's go to this table here, this flat table. And if I push it flat on the table, hopefully you can see how much stretch is in there. I'm gonna get a straight edge, hold on. We're touching all the way around here and you can see we've got curve that way. We also have curve this way. So with that small amount, this is already too much curve for a door skin. So you got to take it very slow, step by step. But there it is. There's the basics of stretching on a panel. Next, I'm going to show you a little bit of planishing. So first to do that, I got to make a mess. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to find my earplugs. These are Christina's earplugs. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Here's a pair for me. So I'm just gonna choose whatever big old hammer. Make a little spot in there. I'm gonna start in the center, work my way out. Like I'm just gonna make a, a round shape. This hammer, I'm stretching this. We're gonna cover sandbag and shrinking stump stuff later, but uh, for now you're just gonna watch me make a mess. They help if you stick them in your ears. Holy crap, what a mess. Look at that. Looks like garbage. But that's how it's supposed to look at this point. So, if I try and get some of that out of there. You can see the panel kind of resembles the other one. It's got rays in it. It's got stretch in it already, but it's just a wobbly mess. So what we do, we bring it to the English wheel. See, we got it in there. The wheel won't be stretching it right now because basically the wheel can't fully pinch the metal yet because it's so lumpy. So we're just gonna slowly work it tighten it, slowly work it, and we'll get all that out of there. You see now my, my upper wheel is slipping. It's because it's knocking down all those highs right now. You can see the marking on the panel where the little shiny spots are, those are all the highs. That's where the top wheel is pressing down. It's nice and loose in there now. We can tighten it up a bit. A little more, tighten it up. Okay, we're gonna tighten it up again.
Okay, as I said, don't run over the edges. I'm just doing this quick to give you guys a quick demonstration, but you can see all of our dimples, all of our hammer marks, they're all out of there. Uh, for the most part, you can go a lot further with that and get it much nicer. But we've added a ton of shape into this panel with the hammer and planished it with the wheel. Let's have a look at it on the, uh, on the table here. Like that's pretty extreme. I mean, look at that. That's a ton of shape, right? Ton, it's a ton of shape. In just a couple of minutes. All right, that is the basics of planishing with the wheel. Now I would like to show you the form so that we can put a roll into it. I recently used this on a repair where it was a pretty flat panel on the side of a vehicle. We're talking about rockers on something, you know, maybe a truck or a van, that kind of thing. And where you basically want to just get a roll in a piece of metal. Not everybody has like a three rod roller. You know, I've got one in the back corner there. I could have used it. Actually, no, I couldn't have. It was a little bit too wide. Mine's only 36 inches. I did a four foot long panel for the side of a van and that was uh, what I used the wheel for. At that time, I used to actually uh, use tape. So if you don't have a rubber band like this, which um, somebody saw me using tape, <laughs> Johnny, if you're watching, thanks again, man. He saw me using the tape and he sent me this rubber band and uh, the tape thing, it does work great, but it's kind of a pain in the ass because you're using a ton of tape, but the rubber band does the same thing. So like I said before, because this is soft, the lower wheel being hard is gonna push into the sheet metal and it's gonna press it into the soft and it's gonna take the form of that lower wheel. So if I wanted to just get a two dimensional roll in this panel, this is what I'm using. For this instance, you do wanna run right off the edge. You don't wanna leave a frame because we want the roll to be the same here as it is at the edge in this case. So, just tighten her up a little bit, Ooh, a little bit much. There we go. All right, so there you go. We're starting to get a roll in here. I'm just gonna quickly grab that straight edge just to demonstrate what I mean by two-dimensional form, 3D shape. You probably already understand it, but we did not add anything of shape into it. It's only two-dimensional form. So that's the dimension where we've got our roll. We did not stretch the panel at all. So I'm just running it straight through, trying to keep it nice and straight. You can give yourself guidelines as well, if it helps. I know it does actually, it does help. If you were to draw a bunch of really straight lines all parallel here, you'd be able to keep this, you know, really straight. All right. These are the absolute basics of the English wheel. I hope that this video has been a little bit insightful. If you don't know a ton about English wheels or you're thinking about getting one or you're not sure what you're gonna use it for, I think they're a really great tool for anybody making anything metal shaping related on any car. Like I said before, there's our 2D form with our rubber band on our top wheel. We've got our stretched panel, just a couple of passes. We got some nice stretch in there. Don't forget about the frame. Take your time, experiment. Just track yourself, get used to the motion of trying to run your wheel next to your last pass and just run it over all the way. You'll learn so much just by messing up sheet metal with a machine like this. Also our planishing example where we used the sandbag and, uh, and planched it all out. So I hope you guys like this video. A lot of people ask me about the English wheel and I hope that uh, I answered some questions for you guys that were, that were curious. Please check out some of the other videos. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. 
Watch out for our next one. Tell your friends. We're here twice a week. We appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Have a great day.